Okay, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Chapter 15. Investments in international operation. So let's just talk about what's the basic uh, components or parts of investment. Um, the purpose of investments is that um, people or companies rather invest in other things so that they can make more capital, more uh, income. Um, some companies are already formed to produce income or have a return on their investments. And then a lot of companies, on the other hand, might make investments for some strategic reasons, meaning that they have some strategies going forward of um, what they need to invest in. So some companies have different types of investments that they make. And we have both short-term and long-term. Short-term investments are going to be those investments that um, can be converted to cash within uh, one year, so between three and 12 months. And they would include um, other things other than cash, of course. So investments in things that are other than cash, like building equipment, land, those type of plant assets. But the key point is, is that those short-term investments can be easily converted to cash within one year or the operating cycle, depending on which one is substantially longer. And because cash is not a part of that and also cash equivalent, um, we're just looking at plant assets such as equipment, furniture, things of that nature. The reason why cash equivalents wouldn't be in that bunch is because cash equivalents we know can already be converted to cash uh, within one year. Now, long-term investments, those cannot be readily converted to cash because they're long-term, meaning extending past one period or extending past uh, one year. So they weren't intended to be short-term because they can't be converted to cash right away. Good morning. Um, morning. And they are not reported as current assets because it's long-term. It will be considered more so of a... Um, long-term asset or non-current. So you got some different securities. When we talk about investments, you have both debt securities and equity securities. These are things that you need to know about each one. If we're talking about debt securities, we're talking about things like loans, um, things that have been financed, right? Notes, bonds, CDs um, can be issued from government, other companies, or even individuals, if that's the case. Equity securities, that's going to depend on the owner's um, equity within the company. You know how uh, normally they raise capital by, by selling stock, right? So their investment of shares of stock that are issued by other companies or even their own company would be considered an equity security. So how do we report these different types of investments? The first thing that you need to figure out is whether or not, what type of security is it? Is it a debt security or equity security? And you need to also determine whether or not you're going to hold it for the short term or the long term. And what is the, if applicable, what is the percentage of ownership in another company's equity security? So if you're going to have equity, uh, short term or long term securities, what percent of ownership does that have? So they have the different class of investment here, trading held to maturity, available for sale, significant influence, controlling influence, which we're going to talk about those differently. Trading, debt and non-influential equity securities that are actively traded, in other words, stocks and everything that are actively traded on the market. They are reported at fair value. Held to maturity, doesn't matter about what the maturity is. We know that we amortize the cost. In other words, we allocate that cost over a significant period of time. Available for sale, debt non-influential equity securities also reported at fair value. Significant influence, equity securities with significant influence. We're going to talk about significant and insignificant influence 
Um, you use the equity method to report controlling influence. Um, you use the consolidation method to report. So let's first talk about debt security. So we're talking about things like loans and bonds and CDs and things of that nature, right? Debt securities are recorded at cost when purchased. So down here in this journal entry, remember the three things I told you you had to look at, whether or not it was a debt security or equity security, whether or not it was long term or short term. And what was the third one? How many companies? How many shares of the company? Equity, the ownership of equity in, an, in another company. So with this, we know the type is a debt security, right? And because it says here, September 1st, Music City paid 29,500 plus a 500 brokerage fee to Dale for a two year bonds payable. Us knowing that it says bonds payable already lets us know that it is a debt security because debt securities are loans, bonds, CDs, things of that nature. And then the basis of whether or not it's long term or short term. It said the bonds pay interest semi-annually on August 31st and February 28th. They plan to hold these bonds until they mature. So how many years did it say the bond was for? Mm -hmm. And that extends past yeah. one year, which means it is a long term, long -term investment. So we debit long term investments here held to maturity. That's what HTM means for $30,000. We credit cash for $30,000. For those bonds. Now, interest earned, they say they pay interest semi annually, right? Par value or principal amount of 30000 times that interest rate of 7% times 4 over 12. Why 4 over 12? Well, they told you that what dates do they pay the interest? Semi annual. Semi -annual. They gave you months, remember? August and February. Mm -hmm. So here they're showing if we just look at um, 4 over 12, it says accrued on December 31st, interest earned but not received. So whenever they received it, it had to be on the fourth month and 12 months had not passed. So four over twelve, seven hundred dollars interest earned, debit to interest receivable, receivable, credit to interest revenue for that seven hundred, and down here they're showing you on the income statement, which you know only has revenues and expenses, it's going to be under interest revenue for that seven hundred dollars. Here's another interest payment, February twenty eighth. 30,000 par times the interest rate times 6 over 12. That's the semi-annual payment, right? Because um, it had been six months from that date of that bond. So $1,050 is the interest. And then it says, they're showing you here the interest earned in 2012. So those remaining four months by December 31st was the $700 in interest. And then two more months to make the six-month semi-annual payment um, was 350 that equals up to the $1,050. Um, a debit to cash for that 1050 because they earned it. Um, a credit to interest receivable to take that previous $700 interest payment out. And a debit to interest revenue for the 350 for the remaining two months. So if when a bond matures, because we did say hold until maturity, right? We are just basically retiring this bond at the face value in which we um, sold it. So when the bonds mature, Music City is going to receive the amount of par value in cash. So no interest, no any of that. Debit to cash for 30000 that they're receiving and a credit to held to maturity investment of 30000 Basically taking it out of that investment account, putting it into cash and retiring it. Now, equity securities are a little different. Equity securities are recorded at cost when they are acquired, when they are purchased, okay? So that includes both commission, any brokerage fees, any other fees they have. If 
some cash dividends have been received and they're credited to dividend revenue and are, of course reported on the income statement because that's all the income statement shows and when the securities are sold the proceeds from selling it compared to cost you have to recognize whether or not there is a gain or a loss from that sale so here's an example they purchased 1,000 shares um, of common stock and and we can use this example because we're talking about equity right we know you earn equity by selling and purchasing stock so they uh, purchased this stock for 86,000 in the open market the securities are classified by management as available for sale meaning they purchase them and they're e they can easily do what sell them so long-term investment 86,000 cash to be paid out for those shares, eighty-six thousand. Now they're looking at now the dividends earned on uh, that eighty-six thousand in shares that they purchased. So it says on November second, Music City received one thousand seven hundred and twenty dollars quarterly dividend on the investment. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. You didn't bring it back. Who's calling him last time? I told y'all to come prepared. You see, they wrapped us in here. Um, debit to cash by uh, for $1,720 uh, dividend revenue of $1,720 earned uh, it says receive dividends for $1.72 um, $1.72 per share now they're, now they're selling 500 of those shares that they purchased before the original cost per share, if you do that, 86000 divided by those 1,000 shares, you get $86 per share that they paid, right? Mm -hmm. Then they just sold 500 of those shares, and they're going to sell it for the same thing they paid for it of $86. So $43,000 um, is what they should sell it for because that's what it's worth. However, they've sold it for $45,000, which means they have a what? Again, so we're debiting cash to be received forty five thousand. We're crediting long term investments to take it out of that account of forty three thousand because that's what it was worth. And then we're showing a gain on sale of that long term investment of two thousand dollars. Traded securities. So traded securities can be debt or equity. It doesn't matter. Um, generally, they are traded strictly for profit. Um, it's so frequent to where it could be frequently being purchased or frequently being sold. It's always reported at fair value, remembering from that chart I showed you earlier. And you always have to recognize a gain or a loss. So this first example, Techcom's portfolio of traded securities had a total cost of 11500 and fair value of 13000 So the fair value is more than what they what? Paid. Paid. On December 31st, the first year, the securities were held. Um, the second, the $1,500 difference between the cost and the fair value is unrealized, meaning they didn't realize that they had a gain or a loss. So we got a debit here to fair value adjustment trading for $1,500 and a credit to unrealized gain income of $1,500 to reflect that unrealized gain from this sale and this just shows you the balance sheet on the current assets how that 1500 is being um, added to what was already in short-term investments to give you a total amount of short-term investments and how it has changed so now this example they're selling the securities for 1200 right it only cost them how much 1000 so they have to recognize the gain on the sale, right? Cash of twelve hundred received, taking that one thousand out of short term investment and recognizing that two hundred dollar gain. Um, it says the gain is reported in other revenues and gain section on the income statement. If it had been a loss, it's going to be recorded up under the expenses section of the income statement. Held to maturity can be only debt securities. That's very important. Not equity. If you got a held to maturity anything, it's not going to say equity, but debt securities. The intent is so that they can hold whatever that security is, bond, loan, whatever, until it matures. 
Um, current assets, if their maturity dates are within one year, which would mean it's a what kind of asset? I mean, a what kind of investment? Short term. Short term. Or non current under long term, if the maturity date extends past um, the one year. And remember how I said the, um, we amortize the cost, meaning we allocate the cost over a period of time. Available for sale securities. That's going to be a debt or equity security that's not classified as trading or held to maturity. It's not actively managed. It, um, the intent is always to make money off of it, but if it's short term, um, within one year, if it's short term, then the intent is to sell it within one year. If it's long term, then it doesn't what? It's just long term. It's not going to be sold within one year. Always at fair value, and then you have to report for unrealized gain or loss. Available for sale. So we said that that could be debt or equity, right? But it's not classified as a what? Not classified as trading or held to maturity. So this example, they got two available for sale securities, and here's the information. They got improv bonds worth 30000 Well, they paid 30000 What they're really worth is $29,050, so their unrealized loss is $950. They got common stock 500 shares that they paid 43000 for, but are worth right now fair value $45,500. So they have an unrealized gain of $2,500. Down here, this journal entry is just showing the fair value adjustment, which is the difference between what? Their improv bonds, unrealized gain or loss, and their common stock, unrealized gain or loss. Debit to fair value adjustment available for sale long term. That's what LT means, $1,550, and a credit to unrealized gain equity for that same amount. This is just showing you that portion of the balance sheet to show you how these are listed because on a normal balance sheet that you've seen up until this point, you probably have not seen things like long-term investment, fair value adjustment, short-term, et cetera. But remember, if it's short-term, it's going to be up under what part of the asset? If it's short-term and you know short-term assets mature within what? One year or less, right? So that means that short-term investments are going to be listed under where? Under assets. Good morning. Current. Current assets. And if it's long-term, fair value, all that good stuff is going to be located under non-current or long-term assets. So here, long-term investments at cost available for sale, 73000 At fair value adjustment of 1550 that means long-term investments now change to 74,500. Um, notice that the unrealized gain or loss from what happened up here in the previous slide is also listed down here under equity because it was an equity security dealing with stock. All right. So Let's do some problems. Starting with quick study 15-1. Quick study 15-2.
Okay, so please say 15 dash one. On April 18th, Riley Company made a short term investment in 300 common shares of XLT Company. The purchase price is $42 per share, and the broker's fee is $250. The intent is to actively manage these shares for profit. On May 30th, Riley Company receives $1 per share from XLT and dividend. Prepare the April 18th and May 30th journal entries to record these transactions. Okay, remember how we talked about the three factors when you're recording securities, right? The first thing that you need to figure out is whether or not it's what? Short term. Before that. If it's a debt or equity. Debt or equity security, and then short term or long term. And if it's an equity security, then what? You're concerned about what? The ownership. The percent of ownership. So with the first one, whether or not it is a um, debt security or an equity security, what is it? based off of reading that problem. Look at what you're doing there. What, what's going on? They're, they're selling shares, right? So the shares have anything to do with that? Remember we talked about it. Debt securities are dealing bless you with loans, bonds, things of that nature. So if we're talking about dealing with shares, is it a debt security or equity security? Equity security. Okay, and because it says here that they made a short-term investment, that's how you know that it's going to be short-term, right? So the first journal entry that we're supposed to show is to record the purchase of these shares. And looking at this, what kind of equity security is it? Because it's not just a regular equity security. What is it? If they actively manage this for profit, what kind of security is it? They actively manage it for profit. Go back and read the descriptions of those different types of securities and tell me what kind of security do you deal with that actively manages for profit? A security that is actively managed for profit. And it's also a short-term investment. You know that it's an equity security, so you only should be looking under equity securities. What type of security is actively managed for profit? Trading security. Trading security, good. So the first one to record the actual purchase. How many shares did we purchase? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we purchased 300 shares, you said? Yeah. At what price? $42. So how much did we pay for them in total? dollars times 300 shares. And what else do we need to do? Add the broker fee? Yes. So 12,600 and we had brokerage fees. Which means that our, the amount that we paid for these shares is how much in total? 12850 Okay, so 
What do we debit and what do we credit here to show this? When you're recording a trade of security that you have purchased, what do you debit? What do you credit? You debit the long-term investment. Mm -mm. This is the short term. So short-term investments, and then what do you credit? Cash, because you pay cash, right? Yep. It's important that when you do this kind of journal entry, you put whether it's trading, available for sale, all of that. So 12850 credit cash. 12850 The second journal entry they want us to record is what? The dividend? The dividend. So with the dividend, we earn how much on those shares? One dollar per share. And how many shares are we dealing with? Three hundred. So that means three hundred dollars, right, in dividend. What do we debit and what do we credit? You earn dividends on the shares that you have. So what do you debit? Cash. Cash. Credit what? Dividend revenue. Dividend revenue, good. $300. Good. Quick study 15 2. Jorn Company purchased short term investments and available for sale securities at a cost of $50,000 on November 25, 2013. At December 31, 2013, these securities had a fair value of $47,000. This is the first and only time the company has purchased such security. The first thing they want us to do is prepare the December 31st, 2013 year-end adjusting entry for the security portfolio. So we at this point are trying to figure out whether or not we have an unreal loss, an unrealized loss or gain. And how do I, why do I say that? Remember the three factors that you have to go by. The first factor is what type of security is this that we're dealing with? It's available for sale. Available for sale, which is also a what? Is available for sale an equity or a debt security? Equity. So, and how do we know that? Available for sale means you're selling what? Shares. And shares deal with equity, right? So it's an equity security, it's available for sale, and is it short term or long term? Short term. How? How do you know? Because it said good. All right, so if we're preparing a journal entry for the year end adjustment, what are we adjusting for? For the difference of the cost and the fair value. Yes, good. So we're we're adjusting for the difference between the cost, which was how much? Fifty thousand and the fair value, which was how much? Forty seven thousand. That gives us an adjustment of how much? Three thousand. And what journal entry do we record this three thousand with? A debit to what and a credit to what? A debit to fair value adjustment. A debit? Think about what you're doing here. You're adjusting for what? If fair value was less than what we paid for, we suffered what? A loss. So if you had a gain, yes, it would be a debit to fair value adjustment. But because it's a loss, what do you debit? Unrealized loss. What do we credit? Fair value adjustment. Fair value adjustment. Um, and what type of security? Trading. That's not trading. I mean, uh, what do we call it? Uh, available. Available. Hey, AFS. What's the amount? 3000 
Okay, the second thing that they have required that we do. Says, for each county in the entry for part one, explain how it is reported on the financial statement. So for unrealized loss equity, how are we going to report that? Is it on the balance sheet or is it on the income statement? Unrealized equity is on the income statement? It's on the balance sheet. Equity is not reported on the income statement. Only income and expenses are on the income statement. So for one, it's reported on the balance sheet. What section of the balance sheet are we going to post the unrealized loss? It's not hard to tell you what part. Uh-uh. What's next to where it says unrealized loss? Put your thinking cap on this one. Equity. So that's the section that it's going to be in, right? Is it going to be a reduction to equity or an increase? Okay, so we have said that it's going to be on the balance sheet. It's going to be in the equity section. And it's going to be a deduction. What about fair value adjustment available for sale? What uh, uh, what financial statement? On current, I mean, uh, what's the financial statement? If you just told me unrealized loss equity was on a balance sheet, wouldn't that be? Wouldn't you think that the fair value adjustment is going to be on the same statement? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah. So yes, it's going to be on the balance sheet as well. What section is it going to be in? Current assets. Current assets? Fair value adjustment available for sale. You need to look at that account because you see what we're doing with that. You need to look at that account as a contra asset account. Which at which asset account is it contra to? Read the first line of that sentence in the problem. Short term investment. Short term investment. So we are saying that fair value adjustment available for sale is a contra asset to short term investments available for sale, correct? So it's on the balance sheet, and that's where you put it on the balance sheet. All right, number three is saying for us to prepare the April 6, 2014 entry when Jorn sells one half of these securities for $26,000. How many securities did they have to begin with? How much in securities, I should say? $50,000. $50, and they're selling one half of that, right? And even though they have told you that they're selling it for $26,000, how much was it really worth? Twenty-five thousand. So if we are recording the sale of one half of it, obviously fifty thousand times one half is going to be twenty-five thousand. And then they sold it for how much? Twenty-six thousand. One thousand dollar difference, right? So what's the journal entry? Debit to what? Credit to what? Because looking at this, did we make a gain or a sale? A gain or a loss? Gain. Gain. So a debit to cash for how much? $26,000. 26, that's what you receive. Credit to what? Uh, 
Uh huh. What short term investment available for sale? Twenty five thousand and what else? Study 15-3. Prepare uh, her talk company's journal entries to reflect the following transactions for the current year. First transaction says purchases 200 shares of craft stock as a short term investment and available for sale security at a cost of $50 per share plus 300 in broker fees. So, again, I ask the question those three factors. First factor is whether or not it is an equity or debt security. Second factor is whether or not it is short term or long term. Third factor is if it is equity then what's the percent of ownership? What is this? Is this considered equity <laughs> or debt? Equity. Equity. Because it deals with shares and stock, right? Right. Now, the next question is, is it short term or long term? Short term. Short term. So we're going to debit what account? Short term. Investment. Short term investment slash what? Available for sale. Available for sale. Uh, we're going to credit what? Cash. Cash. Now, what's the amount? How many shares are we dealing with? 200 shares and what price? Uh, $50 per share. So 200 times $50 per share is how much? 10000 10, And then you also have to add in what? Brokerage fee. How much was it? 300 Mm-hmm. $10,300. Good. Number two says, or the second journal entry says, sells 200 shares of its investment in craft stock at $56 per share. Broker's commission is $150. So they are selling, which means they are receiving what? Cash. Okay. Cash, and that's what we're going to debit. Are they making a gain or a loss? Gain. Gain, yes. right? Because how much was it worth? $50. $50 each, and obviously if they're selling it at $56, they're making a gain, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to debit cash and credit what? Dividend It's not dividends. You're just selling your stock. Gain on Short term investments available for sale. And then what else do you credit? The Short, term. Short term investment. Available for sale, right? And so they had how many shares that they sold? 200 shares. What was the price? $56. How much? 11200 Don't you have to add? What else do you add? 
commission or brokerage fee, whatever they call it in the problem, which was 150. So that's a total of 11,350. If we bring it back up to our journal entry, that's how much cash we received, correct? Mm -hmm. How much do we record for gain? Mm -hmm. How much were they worth? When you subtract ten thousand three hundred, how much? So we have to include the broad. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No. No. I think I just pulled that right from. Uh, which I probably no, 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 I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. All right, so 11,350 minus 10,300. So we just said, that's the amount that it was worth that you purchased it for. What's the difference? This is what's wrong because it's being sold. Instead of you adding, you subtract. You subtract brokerage. If you were purchasing it, you would add brokerage, like we did up here. But because you're selling it, you subtract brokerage, which means that it would be $750. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Yes. So gain was seven fifty, and of course the amount of stock was ten thousand three hundred. So may you might want to write it down somewhere so that you don't forget it. But if you're purchasing stock, you add brokerage fees. If you are selling the stock. Then you would um, then you need to subtract any broker cheese or commissions. Quick study fifteen dash four. Hyper company completes the following transactions during the current year. May 9th purchases 200 shares of Ego stock at, as a short-term investment and available for sale securities at a cost of $25 per share plus $150 in broker fees. So for that first journal entry, how many shares are we dealing with? 200 shares and we purchased them at what price? $25 and because we are purchasing, we do what with broker fees? Add. Add. So 200 times $25 
5,000, what was the broker fee? So 5,150, what do we debit and what do we credit? Credit, cash. Okay, second one says uh, June second sells 100 shares of this investment in Hebo stock at $28 per share. Broker's commission is $90. So, because we're selling it, are we recognizing a gain or a loss here? Uh, a gain because we purchased it for $25, they sold it for $28. So we're going to debit what in this case? Cash, Cash and credit what? Gain. Available for sale. What else do you credit? Now, how many shares did they sell? 100. 100 shares at what price? $28. Which equals what? Minus what? Ninety dollars. That's the commission, right? Which equals what? Twenty-seven ten. So that's we know that's the amount of cash that they received, right? Mm -hmm. How much were the short-term investments worth? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars times how many shares? Which means that they were worth twenty five hundred. Which means we recognize the gain of I see why you did it, but we can't do that. And I'll tell you why. Because remember up here, when you purchased them, and you added in that brokerage, mm -hmm. the new purchase amount came became 5150 So 5150 um, times 100 over 200 shares equals what? Calculate that for me. Twenty-five seventy-five. So that really is the the how much the one hundred shares are worth. Which means that your gain really is how much? What's your gain? 2710 minus 2575. Okay, the third journal entry says the closing market price fair value of Hego stock is $23 per share. So if the closing value is $23 per share, we need to record a journal entry for what? Market price or fair value is 
dollars per share, which means we need to record a journal entry for what? Adjusting. Fair value adjustment, unrealized loss or unrealized gain. So in order for us to find out what's the unrealized loss or gain, let's look at how much was paid for, let's look at how much was sold as far as these shares are concerned. So the number of shares they sold was about 100 shares, right? And if you divide that by what we said they were worth, which was 25.75, that means they were how much per share? $25.75. Um, if the fair, fair value market now is $23, right? Yeah, we got that part. We got that, but then fair value, 100 shares times what? That $23 is how much? $2,300. So that's the fair value. It's $2,300 instead of $2,575, which means that we have an unrealized, we have a loss or gain loss of how much? $275. Because if we take $2,575 and minus out $2,300, fair value sold for um, $275, which is it? $275, unrealized loss. So and now that we have an unrealized loss, what's the journal entry? What do we debit and what do we credit? Fair value adjustment. Mm -hmm. We just talked about oh, this in oh, that last problem. Unrealized loss. Unrealized loss <clears throat> um, of two seventy five. What do we credit? Fair value. Fair value adjustment two seventy five. Okay, quick study 15-6. Complete the following description by filling in the blank. Number one, equity securities giving an investor significant influence are accounted for using blank. How are significant influence equity securities accounted for? What method? Equity securities given an investor significant influence are accounted for using what? Go back to that chart that I showed you earlier so that you can see how everything is accounted for. It's on page 599 under exhibit 15.2. Equity securities giving an investor significant influence are accounted for using what? Equity method. Number two. Available for sale, debt securities are reported on the balance sheet at what? Fair value. 
Fair value, good. Number three, trading securities are classified as blank assets. Current. Or what? Short term. Short term. Good. Number four, the accrual of interest on bonds held as long-term investments requires a credit to what? Accrual of interest on bonds held as long-term investments requires a credit to huh? cost. They're saying accrual of interest on bonds held. That means bonds that you have sold. I mean purchased. Accrual of interest on bonds held as long-term investments requires a credit to what? What are you earning? Revenue. Revenue. What kind of revenue? Interest revenue. Number five. The controlling investor more than 50% ownership is called the blank, and the investee company is called the blank. The investor that owns more than 50% is called who? And the company that um, invested is called who? Yes, and who, who is the investee company? Subsidiaries. Or, or, yes, parent and subsidiary. Okay, now uh, 10.02, come back at 10.17. And let me show you what problems we're doing when you come back. Exercise 15-1. Exercise 15-2. Exercise 15-3. Exercise 15-7. Exercise 15-9, exercise 15-10, Problem 15-1A. 
exercise 15-1. Prepare journal entries to record the following transactions involving the short-term security investment of your company, all of which occurred during 2013. A, on March 22nd, purchase 1,000 shares of RIP company stock at $10 per share, plus an $80 brokerage fee. These shares are categorized as trading securities. So if we purchase 1,000 shares, we're going to do what with the brokerage fee? Add them. Add them. And so to record this journal entry of what we have purchased, we purchased how many shares? 1,000. What price? 1,000 shares at $10 per share uh, plus how much in brokerage fees? $80. $80 gives us how much? $10,080. $10,080. $10,080. What do we debit and what do we credit? Debit short term investment trading. Okay, debit short term investments trading. And then credit what? Cash. $10,080. Okay. On September 1st, received $1 per share cash dividend on the RIP company stock purchase in transaction A. So uh, we received $1 dividend. And $1 per dividend for how many dividends? 1,000. I mean, how many shares? So 1,000 shares times $1 equals 1,000 in dividends. What do we debit and what do we credit? We're going to debit cash. Uh-huh. We credit dividend revenue. Cash and dividend revenue for that 1000 See. On October 8th, sold 500 shares of RRP company stock for $15 per share, less a $50 brokerage fee. So, um, we got 500 shares times $15, which is the price, and also minus what? How much? $50, which gives us how much? Seven thousand four hundred and fifty. So what do we debit? Cash. Cash. Credit. Gain on short term. Gain on short term investment. Trading. And then also credit short-term investment trading. How much cash did we receive? 7450 How much was that short-term trading uh, worth? For 500 shares? Uh -huh. Remember, 500 shares is half of 1,000, correct? Yes. So $10,080 divided by 2. 5,000. $5,040. So that's how much those short term investments will work, which means that you're going to recognize a gain of how much? Two thousand one hundred ten. Two 
2,410. Exercise 15-2. Prepare journal entries to record the following transactions involving the short-term security investments of the tour company, all of which occurred during 2013. On June 15th, paid $1 million cash to purchase Remedy's 90-day short-term debt security. Dated June 15th, $1 million, I'm sorry, principal. Dated June 15th, that paid 10% interest categorized as held to maturity securities. So the first journal entry, we just need to record the purchase, which means that it's going to be a debit to what? Cash. A debit to cash if you purchased it. What kind of security did it tell you it was? What kind of investment? Short term. Short term held to maturity, right? So if you're showing the purchase of it, how much did you pay? One million. One million. So what do you debit? What do you credit? Short term investment, HPM. One million. Credit what? Okay. okay, second journal entry. On September 16th, received a check from Remedy in payment of the principal and 90 days interest on the debt securities purchase in transaction A. So, we got interest that has been earned at this point, right? And the principal was one million, right? Mm -hmm. What's the interest rate? Ten percent. Ten percent. So that one million principal times the ten percent interest rate, and also times what? Remember how you calculate interest. Principal times interest rate times term. Right. So okay. 90 days over what? 360. 360. Which gives us how much in interest? 25,000. So what's the uh, what do we debit and what do we credit? Credit. We got debit cash. No, it won't get interest received. Receive. Ain't say nothing about paying nothing on account. Oh, what did it say? Earned. Interest earned or interest revenue. It's all the same. But what do you debit? Cash. Cash is the only thing that you debit. And then what do you credit? Interest revenue. Interest revenue and what else? What is this that you're earning interest on? Short term investment held to maturity. Cash, we know that we received one million twenty-five thousand. Interest revenue was how much? The twenty-five thousand. And the principal of that short-term investment was one million. Exercise 
Prepare journal entries to record the following transactions involving the short-term security investments of Crumb Company, all of which occurred during 2013. First one, on August 1st, paid 450,000 cash to purchase house. 9% debt securities, 450,000 principal, dated on July 30, 2013, and maturing January 30, 2014, categorized as available for sale securities. So the first thing we need to record is what we just purchased. Are we dealing with the equity security or debt security? Equity? Debt security. Okay, so the first thing to record the purchase is what, how much did we purchase? 450,000. So we're going to debit what, credit what? Short term. Debit short term investments. Okay. And credit cash, what's the amount? 450000 The second one says, on October 30th, receive a check from HALP for 90 days interest on the debt securities purchase in transaction A. So what are we debiting? What are we credit? We're recording interest at this point. Cash interest expense. Interest expense. Mm -hmm. Or Interest payable? It won't be revenue, would it? Yeah. So, what was the principal uh, value of that um, security? 450000 What was the interest rate? 9%. Uh, 9%. Hmm. Nine and what's the term? 90 days. 90 days over. 360. What's the amount of interest? So $10,125. Good. Exercise 15-7, which is on page 620. On December 31st, 2013, Rajiv Company held the following short-term investments in its portfolio of available for sale securities. Rajiv had no short-term investments in its prior accounting periods. Prepare the December 31st, 2013 adjusting entry to report these investments at fair value. So, They've given you this chart here. And what is the one thing that we need to do in order to find out fair value? Um, hmm? You said find out fair value? Yep. This chart they've given you, they've given you these companies uh-huh a realized gain did they give you the fair value already Yes. So in order for you to find the, the adjustment or the unrealized gain or loss, you need to do what? Well, you got to find them out first. Don't you have to add all these? Ain't no point in doing them separate. So 
So how much for a loss? I mean, a cost. Two hundred forty-six thousand. Fair value. Two hundred thirty-seven thousand. Subtracting the two. Gain or loss? Gain of $9,000. A gain? Wait. Looking at this, you paid more. Oh, yeah. It was $9,100. So, what's the journal entry? Debit what? Credit what? Loss on. Unrealized. Unrealized. Equity, credit what? Fair value adjustment. Available for sale of Exercise 15-9. On December 31st, 2013, Blue Jack Company held the following short-term available for sale security. Blue Jack had no short-term investments prior to the current period. Prepare the December 31st year in adjustment entry to record. Didn't we just do that? Something like that. Um, Let's so record the fair value adjustment for these security. Okay. Yeah, we won't do that. Let's scratch that. We just did it with the other one. Exercise 15-10. Prescript Company began operations in 2012. The cost and fair values for its long-term investment portfolio and available for sale security are shown below. Prepare Prescripts December 31st, 2013, adjusting entry to reflect any necessary fair value adjustments for these investments. So, two investments done, two different years. And we have the cost and we have the fair value. So I'm not going to add them Add. Right, so I think that's where she was going with that is. So we're not just going to add. Okay, so for you got 2012 and 2013, right? And you got cost, you got fair value, and we need to recognize a gain or a loss. Now, cost for 2012 is how much? Okay, fair value. Okay. Now, because we can reasonably look at this and tell that fair value is less than cost, we know we recognize the what? And a loss. A loss. How much of it? $1,927. What was the cost for 2013? $60,120. What was the fair value? $9,270. Okay, so recognizing looking at fair value is greater than cost, so that means we recognize the what? A gain. A gain of how much? $30,151. $30,151. Now, at this point, what do we do with these two numbers? We add them. Why? You should know why. Because it says they want to replace any fair value. Right. 
total fair value. Total fair value. So you're going to have to add. Total means add, right? So 30,151 plus the negative 1,927 is how much? 28,000. That ain't right. 30,151 plus 1,927. Add it or subtract? Add it, add it, add it, add it, add it. We done said that total means add. How much is it? 32,000. 32,000 what? 78 But I thought that was a negative. Don't matter, folks. It said the total. Listen to what I said to you 80 times. Total. So you add it. Total means to add. Does it not? Last time I checked, when I took math, it meant to add. So total means that we added those two together. It doesn't matter what's negative. You show you reflect the negative because it was a loss. After that, we don't care about it. We have to add. So 30,151 plus that 1,927, fair value adjustment of $32,078. So what's the journal entry? What do we debit? Can we make two mm -hmm, it's just one. What do we debit? What was all of this for? Fair value. Fair value adjustment. Um and what do we credit? The unrealized uh huh. So two two party. different ones. Uh uh. Two different. That's what you meant by two different. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Same journal entry. Unrealized loss. Right. Mm -hmm. Unrealized gain. 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 We said fair value adjustment was this thirty-two thousand seventy-eight dollars. Mm -hmm. How much for unrealized loss? Mm -hmm. Gain. Mm Okay, so problem 1-15-1A. Carlsville Company, which began operations in 2013, invested idle cash and traded securities. The following transactions are from its short-term investment in its trading securities. So we got to record journal entries for both 2013, 2014, and 2015. Ignore any year-end adjusting entries. First journal entry in 2013, January 20th, purchased 800 shares of Ford Motor Company at $26 per share plus a $125 commission. 
So because we purchased it, we're gonna do what with commission? Add it. Add it. What do we debit and what do we credit? Come on, we've been doing this all day. What do we debit and what do we credit? Short term investment trading. Credit what? Cash. How many shares are we talking about? 800. Times what price? Plus what fee? Commission of $125. How much? $25. Somebody read the second one quickly. Purchase 2,200 shares of movement at $44.25 per share, plus a $585 commission. Okay, so. Okay, so same journal entry, right? How many shares? What price? Plus what fee? How much we dealing with? $97,920. Somebody read the next one, please. Purchase 750 shares of V7 at $750 per share plus a $200 commission. Same journal entry. Mm -hmm. How many shares? What price? Plus amount? All right, 2014, read that journal entry. Anybody, quickly. Alright, so what's the journal entry? We debit what, credit what? Do we have to refer back to 2013 or we just. Yeah, it's, it's going to depend. But just right now for this one, what do you debit? What do you credit? Just looking at the price, they're selling it for $29. What was it sold? What was it purchased for? $26. So gain or loss? Gain. What do we debit? What do we credit? You're selling. What do you debit? What do you credit? Cash. We debit. Uh huh. Short term investment. Is it gain or short term investment? It means short term investment. Doesn't matter. All right. What's the amount? How many shares are we talking about? 800 shares times what price? $29 minus what fee? Which one is it? I heard 400 and then I heard 200.
What's the amount? Somebody read the second transaction. So, 750 shares of G7 at $2.25 per share, less $102.50 per Same journal entry. Ms. Williams. Yes, ma'am. So, on the first 415, you debit cash for 22915 And then you've got short term investment. I'm sorry. Okay, so look, I'm only writing what you tell me. So <laughs> if you told me wrong, then that's what's up there is wrong. I'm not, you know, going back and checking it. So what was the game? This what was the short term investment? The short term investment cost twenty three thousand two hundred. So what's the game? Ain't that, don't you do 800 times the 29? No. How much was, you have it up here at the top. You just calculated all this stuff at the top. The short term investment was worth how much? 20,925. Don't do it for this one. I mean, what's the game, folks? Can we finally move on to this one? Yes, sir. The same journal entry, or is it a, a gain or a loss? You paid fourteen. You paid forty-four dollars and twenty-five cents. Am I correct? No, I'm sorry. You paid seven dollars and fifty cents. Uh, you're selling it for ten dollars and twenty-five cents. Gain or loss? Gain. 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 So it's the same journal entry, cash, short term investments, and gain on short term investments. So the amount of cash received, well, how many shares are we talking about? 700. 700. 750 times what price? 1025 minus what fee? Thank you. So the amount of cash you received was how much? 7585 And short term investment was worth how much? 5825 So that means your gain was how much? One thousand seven hundred and sixty. Somebody read July twenty second. Purchase sixteen hundred shares of Hunt Corp at thirty dollars per share plus a four hundred and forty four dollar commission. All right. So just to show a purchase, what do we debit? What do we credit? Short term. Short term investments, trading, and credit cash. How many shares? Times what price? Plus what fee? How much? All right, August 19th, somebody read it. Purchase 1,800 shares of Donna Heron at $18.25 per share, plus a $290 each. So purchase, is it the same journal entry? Yes. Purchase 1,800. How many shares? 1,800. 1,800 times what price? 18 $18.25 plus what fee? How much? All right, 
Okay, so for 2015, somebody read that first journal entry. Purchase 3,400 chairs of HCA Max. $34 per chair plus $420 What's the uh, debit? What's the credit? How many shares? What price? Plus? How much? March 3rd, somebody read that. So, 1,600 oh, shares of cart as 25 per share, less, less of $250 per share. Okay, so a debit to what? Credit to what? Debit to cash. Uh huh. It's a short time debt, yeah. Lost on short time debt. It's a loss? Yeah. So, where are you going wrong? Where are you going wrong? If it's a loss, how do you do things differently? Cash is correct that you debit. Do you unrealized loss? Mm -mm. It's still a loss. That don't change. But how do you reflect that? Up until now, you was debiting cash, credit, and gain. So if it's a loss, what do you do? You put loss on the short term. You didn't hear me. When it was a gain, you were debiting cash and you were crediting gain on sale. Now it's the loss, so you also need to debit cash as well as loss, loss on sale. And credit, short term investments. What would the amount of shares? Uh, 1600 times what price? $25. $25 minus what fee? 250 which gives us how much? $39,750. So that's the amount of cash that we received, uh, $39,750. How much were those shares worth? $48,444. $48,444. $444 from the previous journal entry. So that means your loss was how much? $8,694. Good. June uh, 21st. Mr. Cole may read that. So, 2,200 shares of the receipt at $22. That is Okay, so this is a gain or a loss? So same journal entry? How many shares we dealing with? 2,200 times what price? How much? 42? 
minus what? $420. How much cash did we receive? Or what's the amount? $91,000. How much was it worth? From the previous journal entry? 9, 000, I mean, 97928 So that means your loss was how much? Huh? What's your question, Ms. White? Um, the black and decker, like, this is like the first time they purchased it. Yeah, but Where we had... You know no, because they're, they're looking for the loss on Lucent. It says here... Oh, $5,948. And so June 30th now. Purchased 1,200 shares of Black & Decker at $47.50 per share plus a 595 commission. What's the debit? What's the credit? Short-term investment. Credit. Yes. How many shares? $1, Times what price? $47. Plus what fee? $5. Which means how much? $57,595. Last one, November 1st. Sold 1,800 shares of Donna Karen at 18.25 per share, less a 309 commission. What's the debit? What's the, uh, first of all, are you recognizing the loss or gain? Um, it's even. Yeah. It's actually um less a hundred dollars because of the commission. Mm. So it's loss or gain. It's a loss. Of so what's the journal entry? How do you get a hundred? How much did they purchase for the shares? $18.25. So there is a 75 cents. So it's a 75 cents difference, correct? No. No, they actually sold They sold it from the same they purchased before. It's just a $19 difference in commission. The commission share. I don't know what y'all talking about. They but. purchased it for the same amount, but they had plus the commission of two ninety. Right, so they purchased for the same amount. Oh, yeah. That's There's only man. nineteen dollars difference. No matter. You purchased it no eighteen point five. If you add a commission, what was the amount? When they purchased it, they purchased eighteen hundred shares. They purchased it for thirty-three thousand one hundred and forty. Yeah, thirty-three thousand one hundred and forty. Okay, but. When I asked, what did they purchase it for? I heard $19, which I don't even know where that came from. And then I heard, oh, they purchased it for the same thing. No, they didn't. Because when you purchased it before, it was 1,800 shares plus that uh, times that $18.25 plus commission of yeah, 209 So it was different. My question here is, what is the journal entry? A loss. It's a loss. Yeah. That's what I wanted to know. So it can be the same as these over here, which is a debit to cash, debit to loss, and credit to short-term investment. 1,800 shares times $18.25 minus a fee of how much? 309 gives us how much cash? $32,541. How much was it worth? $33,140. Which means the loss is how much? $599. $599. Minus 
And lastly, for that problem, the requirement says on December 31st, 2015, prepare the adjusting entry to record any necessary fair value adjustments for the portfolio of traded securities when HCA's share price is $36 and Black & Decker's share price is $43.50. Okay, Ms. Williams, sorry to go back to something. On, on, on 2015, on March the 3rd, you got loss on sale at the credit, but then loss on sale on 621. What, 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 go back. Say it again. Um, 2015, March okay. the 3rd. Okay. You got loss on sale at the credit. It's a, it's supposed to be better right there. Okay. What was that amount? Eighty-six ninety-four. Thank you. All right. So to do the fair value adjustment, two companies we're working with, right? <laughs> HCA, Black and Decker. We need to look at the amount of shares, the price, fair value, cost and gain or loss okay so hca had how many shares 3400 3, shares what price 34 dollars the price as of december 31st 2015 oh 36 dollars 36 dollars fair value mm. Fair value? $36 times $3,400. What was the actual cost? And, and gain a loss. Okay. You said the actual cost? Yeah, what was the cost of those shares? So that means that the gain or loss was how much? dollars times thirty four hundred shares. Thirty four hundred yeah, sixty three eight I got fifty and you subtracted one twenty two four hundred from one sixteen oh two oh no y'all confusing each other that ain't what she asked me. 
Okay. She's still talking about cost. Cost was thirty four hundred shares times the thirty four dollars, right? Well, that's how much they pay for them, right? You gotta add that commission. Okay, that's what you want. Okay. Black and Decker. What was the amount of shares? Uh, one thousand two hundred. What price as of December thirty first, fifteen? Forty three fifty. And how much was fair value, which is basically forty three fifty times the twelve hundred shares? Fifty two thousand two hundred dollars. Fifty two thousand two hundred. What was the original cost? Five thousand I mean fifty seven thousand five hundred and Gain or loss? Not a loss. How much? Five thousand three hundred ninety nine. So total the fair value column, the cost column, and the gain or loss column. What's the fair value? One hundred seventy-four thousand six hundred. What's the cost? One hundred seventy-three thousand six hundred. Gain or loss? Loss. Loss. Gain. The gain is higher than the loss here. So what's the amount? Ten thousand nine hundred eighty-five. 985. So what's the journal entry? Debit what? Credit what? All of this was to find out fair value. So what do you debit? What do you credit? Fair value. Adjustment. And credit what? The unrealized gain. Chapter 16 for you to read that ahead of time. And you guys got my email about chapter about the comprehensive project, correct? Chapter 17. Mm -hmm. So I just suggest that. 